This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these simple line style letters using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Masterclass, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. So let's go ahead and get started here with Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. We're going to want to go to view, make sure we have custom selected, and then we'll go to zoom and we will zoom in at one to one. And then I'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button up here. And where it says relative to under align, we just want to make sure we have last selected chosen there. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. And the first thing we're going to do is create a single line. So we're going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to put the cursor over to the top left portion of the canvas and click once to create a point. And then I'll hold control and bring that line all the way down like that click again to create another point and then we can let go of control and press enter on the keyboard to create our line. So what we're going to do now is come over here to the stroke style tab and change the width of this stroke to 10 pixels where it says uh, the units of uh, measurement here. Make sure you have PX chosen. I'm just going to change that to 10, hit enter and I'm going to give this a rounded cap right here where it says caps just make that rounded and now what we can do is go to the select tool and we're going to have to create a bunch of duplicates of this line right here. So I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and then I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this over to the right like that. And what I'll do is I'll click and drag over both of those lines. I'll duplicate those by pressing control D and then hold control and bring these over to the right as well. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to select all of these lines, control D to duplicate, hold control, and bring it off to the right like that. And I'm going to do this a few more times until we have a whole bunch of these lines going across our page here. And I'll create maybe one more copy of that and bring this over here. So we want about this many lines right here, somewhere thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exact. Just, I just We just want a whole bunch of lines going vertically like that. And what we're going to do now is click and drag over all of them to select all of them. And I'm going to space them out evenly by going to the distribute panel right here. And where it says uh, over here, this button, the second one in from the right, make horizontal gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click on that. And it's going to arrange all of those lines so that they are equally spaced apart. And then we'll go to path and we will select combine. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure both the width and the height of these of this object is the same. But first we want to come up here to where it says when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion. Make sure you have that turned off as you see here on my screen. And once once it's turned off go ahead and uh, look for where it says W which is width. Triple click on that to highlight the, the uh, whatever number that is. And then press control C on the keyboard to copy it and then paste it into the height here. So triple click on this number where it says H, control V to paste it, and then press enter. And then we will have this series of lines that is both an equal width and height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see this a little better. I'm gonna hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times. Uh, I wanna take the opacity of this and bring this down in half, somewhere thereabouts, it doesn't have to be exactly 50%. And then I wanna click on this object so that we get our rotation handles like that. And then I'll hold control on the keyboard and I'm just going to take this top right corner and bring this around clockwise. One, two, three, three steps like that so that we have the corners going both vertically and horizontally. And that right there is what we're looking for. So the next step is to create uh, our letter or our text or word, whatever it is that you want to make out of this design. So I'm going to grab the text tool, click on the canvas so we get the blinking cursor. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the letter N. I'm going to use an uppercase N. Let me zoom in on that so I can see it better. I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. And now I'm going to choose the font to work with. So I'm going to come up here to where it says T and click on that. This is our text editor. I'm going to look for a font called Montserrat Heavy. You can use whatever font you'd like really. I'm just going to go with Montserrat Heavy because it's a good heavyweight font. I recommend using like a really thick solid weight font uh, like you see here on my screen for this type of design. And once we've done that we want to change that from a text object to a path. So we'll go to path object to path and then we'll just ungroup it so that we can perform path functions on it. Let me go to the select tool. I'm going to hold control and shift, grab one of these arrows and just scale this up like that. And let me just zoom out a little bit by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. You can move the page around by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse like that. And I'm going to take this text object and hold shift and click on these lines right here. 
and I'm going to center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis with these two buttons right here. So center on vertical axis and then center on horizontal axis. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So now I want to select just the letter N here. I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to scale this up like that. I'm going to bring this up to about here. That looks pretty good right there. And maybe a little smaller, maybe not that big. And once we've done that, I want to click and drag over both of these so I have both of them selected. And then I'll go to Path, Cut Path. And you may have to give this a minute or two to process. It's a pretty intense task here. So once it's done, I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. And if you notice, what happened there was these series of lines got broken up in the shape of the letter N here. And all we have to do now is take all of the lines outside of the letter N and delete them by clicking on them and pressing delete. But instead of clicking on all of them individually, we can select a whole bunch of them at once by pressing Shift and Alt on the keyboard and clicking and drawing a red line going through those lines right there. Now make sure your line, your red line, is only going through um, the lines that are outside of the letter here because whatever that red line touches is the, an object that it's going to select. So I'm going to go ahead and press delete on the keyboard and as you can see we got rid of a whole bunch of those. I'm going to do the same thing up here, shift and alt, click and drag through that, press delete on the keyboard, and then there's a few more I want to get rid of in here. So I'm going to shift and alt, click through there. I want to grab this little object right there, get rid of that. Same thing over here, I want to grab these lines, get rid of that. And then I'll take this line right here and get rid of that. So what we're going to do next is click and drag over all of these lines right here, bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to convert these to paths by going to path, stroke to path. And again, you may have to give this a minute or two to process. It's a pretty intense uh, series of processes going on here with all of these individual lines. And once we've done that, we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And the final step is to make the ends of these lines pointy, like as you saw in the thumbnail. So let me zoom in on this top left corner over here. I'm going to grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to click on one of these lines right here, and I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes at the bottom end so I have them both selected. And then I'm going to click on this button up top here that says Join Selected Nodes. I'll click on that. As you can see, it made the end of that a point. I'll do the same thing over here. Join Selected Nodes. Over here, click this object, select those nodes, Join Selected Nodes. It may be a little tricky with these smaller ones right here. Let me zoom in and show you a little bit. Uh, I'm shift clicking these so I can select both of those nodes. Join selected nodes. As you can see, it it made it so it's not exactly it's not exactly the point that we're looking for. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the uh, make selected nodes a corner button, and that's a little bit better. And now I can just take this corner and pull that out a little bit so it matches the other lines better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and do this with all of these lines here. Just go ahead and click on each one of them and join the selected nodes. Um, this is going to be a pretty uh, lengthy task here, so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do all of this. I'll speed up the video and then I will catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, I went through and I completed the rest of the design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Select tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of these lines here, and I'll go to Path, Union. And as you can see here, we're pretty much done. We've completed our line style letters. Now you can just go ahead and color this in however you'd like. You could choose your colors down here, or you could do what I did in the thumbnail. I gave it a gradient. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, I gave this a gradient starting out with uh, a pink shade like that. Click on the Fill tab. Come over here to where it says Linear Gradient. Click on that. And then grab our gradient tool over here, or you could, what I like to do is just press G on the keyboard. And then I'll click on this stop right here to the right, and I will make this um, a shade of yellow like that. Now you can take this node and bring this down here, take this node, bring that up there. And there you have it. We have created our simple line style letters using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.